Anita Bryant's 1977 Save Our Children campaign fought to repeal a gay rights ordinance in Miami, Florida on the basis that homosexuals were a threat to the safety of children. This sparked a national debate over the morals surrounding homosexuality. Christian churches rallied around Bryant's cause and brought existing organization to the campaign, allowing it to succeed in repealing the anti-discrimination ordinance in Miami. Their success generated renewed involvement of Christian conservative leadership in politics, and Bryant's participation drew widespread media attention, which galvanized the public and inadvertently reinvigorated the gay rights movement throughout the 1980s. His truth is marching on. The 1970s was a time of political, economic, and social upheaval. Victories in the civil rights movement of the 1960s gave other activists the momentum needed to launch similar campaigns for progressive social change. However, not all Americans shared the more liberal ideals of this new social construct. The rise in social activism was met with resistance from a burgeoning evangelical, conservative Christian political movement. Participation in politics by American evangelicals had sharply declined at the beginning of the 1900s. However, conservative Christians re-entered the national spotlight with the election of Jimmy Carter, a devout Southern Baptist who claimed to be born again. His political prominence, combined with an increasingly vocal and organized religious right, led Newsweek magazine to declare 1976 the Year of the Evangelical. In the wake of the growing success of the gay rights and sexual liberation movements, conservative Christians began to express concern for the morality of America. Just a few years prior, in 1973, the gay rights movement had won a major battle when the American Psychiatric Association removed homosexuality from its list of mental illnesses. With the removal of the APA designation of homosexuality as a sickness, you can no longer make that argument that science says homosexuality is a crime. Gay rights activists used this momentum to lobby for anti-discrimination laws in cities across the United States. By the end of 1976, 37 U.S. cities had passed local ordinances banning discrimination in employment, public accommodations, and housing based on sexual orientation. In December 1976, Miami-Dade County Commissioner Ruth Schack introduced a similar anti-discrimination ordinance. News of the newly enacted ordinance reached Anita Bryant, a singer, spokeswoman for the Florida Citrus Commission, and former runner-up for Miss America, through her pastor at Northwest Baptist Church in Miami. In a public statement, Bryant condemned homosexuality as immoral. She expressed concern that the law would force schools, like the private Christian school her four children attended, to hire homosexual teachers. Anita Bryant believed that granting these rights would allow gay teachers, whether in public or private schools, to molest or corrupt children. Encouraged by her pastor, Bryant used her celebrity to help organize an effort to repeal the ordinance. She worked through local churches to get signatures for a petition to force a referendum. She was working through a large network of conservative Christian churches, and so she had a really good organizational base. Bryant only needed 10,000 signatures, but within a few weeks she had collected 60,000. With the election only months away, Bryant and her supporters launched the Save Our Children campaign in January 1977. The Save Our Children campaign effectively painted gay men in particular as predators, and that allowing them access, allowing them to come out, would create role models that would cause children to emulate gay men or grant gay men access to small children for the purposes of seducing them. Anita Bryant, she asserted that gays cannot be produced, so therefore they have to recruit. In a poll of Miami residents taken shortly after the launch of the campaign, over 60% said that they did not want a homosexual teaching their child. The LGBT community in Miami was outraged at the accusations, but they lacked the organization and experience necessary to combat the coalition headed by Bryant with support from a powerful network of religious leaders and politicians. The Dade County Coalition for the Humanistic Rights of Gays, a recently formed lobbying group, worked to make their argument an issue of human rights, not just homosexual rights. Jimmy Carter had recently made an appeal for human rights, so they latched on to Carter's own words and tried to play into that. 
But they also compared themselves to other minority groups and talked about how discrimination against gays was similar to discrimination against these groups. Efforts of the Save Our Children campaign attracted almost daily national media attention due to Bryant's celebrity status. Gay rights activists recognized the need to take their own efforts to a national level. In response to the Save Our Children campaign, the National Gay Task Force launched an education program entitled We Are Your Children and organized a national boycott of Florida orange juice by gay bars. The media storm that Anita Bryant's campaign created put gay issues on everyone's radar. Queer communities across the country are taking notice. To say that this caught their attention would be an understatement. This was widely covered in every gay newspaper in the country. Fundraising events were held in cities in California, New York, Chicago, all over the country. They brought in about $400,000, which at that time was an unheard of amount for a gay rights campaign. Despite the political rallies and extensive fundraising organized by gay activists across the country, they were ultimately unsuccessful. In June 1977, the citizens of Miami-Dade County overturned the ordinance by a two-to-one margin. Bryant appeared on national TV on the night of the vote saying, We will now carry our fight against similar laws throughout the nation that attempt to legitimize a lifestyle that is both perverse and dangerous to the sanctity of the family dangerous to our children, and dangerous to our survival as a nation. The homosexual community was shocked. To protest the results of the vote, 3,000 people gathered in Houston, and 40,000 gay rights supporters and allies marched in San Francisco. The gay rights movement took the publicity as an opportunity to spread their message of acceptance and raise the consciousness of the American public. Up at that point in time, the gay rights movement was a very fragmented, very localized. There was really no one organization. After that happened, there was this realization that they needed a national kind of leadership and presence. Soon these efforts started to gain traction with the public. The national boycott of Florida orange juice succeeded in getting Bryant fired as a spokeswoman from the Florida Citrus Commission. Whenever Anita Bryant came to town, gay rights activists, some newly politicized, many newly, would show up en masse to greet her, to boo her, to assert their rights, bearing signs that compared uh, Bryant to Hitler and Stalin. Attendance at gay pride parades skyrocketed, and many homosexuals came out to friends and family in order to join the fight. So the important thing was visibility, to show people that there were lesbian gays across the country and they were you know, being discriminated against. In 1979, just two years after the original Save Our Children campaign, the LGBT community came together to hold the National March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights. The march attracted more than 125,000 people. However, gay rights supporters were not the only group re-energized by the Save Our Children campaign. The Christian right, emboldened by its successes, began to organize as a political faction on a national level. The legacy of this campaign is profound. The vocabulary of saving children from homosexuality inspired subsequent ballot drives and repeals of gay rights across the country, both in the late 70s, but again in the 90s and early 2000s. It was used it as a tactic by conservatives to get out the vote time and time again. This was really one of the first big campaigns that conservative Christians really got involved in. It. They saw that you could use the whole issue of homosexuality as a way of mobilizing people to support their candidates and their causes. Anita Bryant's crusade to repeal anti-discrimination laws protecting gays and lesbians regalvanized two major political factions in the United States, the Christian right and the gay rights activists. The success of Bryant's Save Our Children campaign is widely credited with the organization of conservative Christian leadership in political processes. The massive amount of support the campaign received influenced the Republican Party to incorporate a conservative social agenda in national politics. Bryant's success unintentionally forced the previously fragmented gay rights movement to realize the need for national leadership, mobilization, and visibility. Although the ordinance was not reinstated in Miami until 1999, Awareness and protection of civil rights for gays and lesbians has continued to expand its legacy both in Florida and the United States over the last few decades.